welcome to the first episode of the new Death Head Dice series, Box to Battle, this time featuring the Orc Bama. So we'll start with the unboxing. I picked this up uh, last week from my local hobby store, j, j Hobbies in Kitchener. And as you can see, standard box. It's the same size box as the uh, Battle Wagon box comes in. A lot of, uh, as Games Workshop has, has improved over the years, you see very good coverage on the box of what's there, suggested paints of the new paint line. You know it's a true unboxing when you actually see them take the plastic off. None of this, the box is, oh, already open, which I've done a couple times, so I can't say anything. So we'll get into the box itself. So you see there's the standard GW flying base. Now, this for me, this is the first time I've had something with a flying base. I didn't realize there wasn't a slot to put the, the plastic piece into the base. But, and then you've got the cockpits, there's four of them there, and the kit is spread out over three sprues. And with all the, the more recent GW stuff, they make good use of the space. And then you'll see here the third one, this is mostly wings and some of the plainest and the plain pieces. And you get your standard set of decals. Comment below if you actually use the decals, I find they look a little bit too on Orky, so. And you've got your instruction, it folds out into a big poster for those who like that kind of thing. So I'm going to share a few of my thoughts on the left, having a quick look at the sprues, and for a really better look at the view, or view of the sprues, um, check out the Games Workshop site, because they actually have some good photos of each of the sprues, so you can take a look rather than through the camera. But the few things I, I like to point out that I notice is that, uh, like with every Orc, uh, item we've got a good selection of different heads which is nice because so there's a couple Gretchen head as well as um, like four or five new orc heads where you can always swap them out and put uh, into other kits since you only really need the one head for the game for the thing so you can see my deaf coptas or a few of the other guys getting uh, some of these extra heads which is nice so I'm going to a deep map bat wrap game uh, in three days so I have a bit of time to assemble and paint this before making our way to that game so basically the plan is to do it as a DACA jet and uh, one of the things I was looking at the when I was looking at the white dwarf that has the rules in it I was looking at the the two different variations or the variations on the jet and there really seemed to be two basic builds I mean you had the the one you see in the front box I'll try to get without glare where you have the wings sort of turn up a bit and you've got this extra big shooter in the middle or the super shooter and then you've got the other builds where it's more of a straight wing and it goes straight from the in uh, intake straight to the wing so I really like the look of the um, of the the bent wing and plus if I want to have the extra shooter which for the DACA jet is almost a requirement I want the wing one as well as the undercarriage so between those three that'll give me the three I need so on the kit itself you'll see that you've got the the intake pieces here and they attach the, the they attach the side of the body and then on the other sprue you'll see they have the pieces that act as that middle part without the middle gun goes it almost acts like an extender so my plan and we'll see how it goes through this video is to actually magnetize those because I have a number of, of magnets handy um, which I can use to to get the uh, be able to swap those wings out so if I don't want those extra guns I can do it I'm also hoping to look at the, the different uh, canopies in the back or the, the back piece so if you look on the once again, we'll go back to the box. If you look here, you've got the, the one shooter with the Gretchen in the back, and then you've on one of the other builds, which you can't really see on this box, but you can, I believe. Yeah, here, you've got the, the, other, the other build with the more of a dome, a dome on it there. So I want to be able to swap. So my guess is that piece there can be swapped out. And we can magnetize the bombs as well, so if you want to do them that way. So I'm going to do sort of a hybrid, hopefully, so I can build, use whatever build I want. So we'll start uh, doing a bit of assembly. I'm going to airbrush this, and uh, hopefully everyone will be able to see the final product in a game against Matt in a few days. So we're back. A few sludges all put together. Pretty straightforward. Nothing really of exciting note. Didn't want to bore people with uh, with uh, just the basic stuff here. So overall, very happy with it so far. Cockpit, they do recommend putting in afterwards, which 
fits in really well, which I have to admit went against everything I know from building model, king, model airplane kits in the past, but fit in there very well. We want to separate the, uh, the pilot and the uh, cockpit first just to make sure I can get in there and get the details I want in there. So next up, I have to make a decision on the wings. Now if you follow the instructions for the DACA jet, they suggest just putting it in like that, which is fine. Um, it actually has a really cool sort of down angle to the wings, which I guess is very familiar with the, the Korean War Air type of jets. Um, but because I've talked about in the DAC jet, I want to have that extra uh, super cannon. So to, to accommodate that, what they do is they give you this extra um, this extra piece here, which goes on the side. And what it does is it gives you the extra weapon set. But at the same time, get in there, and at the same time, what it does is it actually bends the wing up slightly. So it gives it a different overall feel. So my original thought was I was going to magnetize um, magnetize here and here and on this side as well and fit that in. I'm doing it through the camera, there we go. And then also doing the um, magnetizing the wing itself as well so I could switch between. Now upon looking at it, and you'll see it here, there's not a lot of room for a magnet there. I mean you can put a fairly good size one there but there I'd be a little concerned about being able to hold it in. So um, at this thing I think, and also because I'm under time constraints to get this done, because this is Saturday, June 9th, I've got less than 48 hours before I have to have this paint assembled and painted for my beat mat bat rack game. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard glue this in and just magnetize it there and hopefully there's enough friction there that'll keep it together and if not I can always go back and fix it. So. So what we'll do is we'll take, uh, take a bit of video of me doing that, and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we're back. I've done a bit of magnetizing. Here you see the, the wings on there the way it's supposed to be. And it's got that neat little up dip, which I like, or up swing, whatever you want to call it. And what I've done, I said I wasn't going, I magnetized the, uh, this part. So as you can see, I've got medium-sized magnet there. One of the little tiny ones there, and then the corresponding ones on here. And it gives a relatively good um, connection. And I did just have to re-glue the one piece on the, on the test, test fate. And so, and I said, I originally said I was going to keep this one on. Well, I lied. <laughs> I sort of got into the process, was able to get that one uh, done, so it did the same thing. Use one of the bigger pieces here, bigger magnets here, and uh, was able to use one of the smaller ones there. The only thing I found is that it was really tight getting that one small magnet in, so I wanted having to uh, actually carve out and go over the edge bit, so I had a bit, uh, bit of a challenge getting that in on, on that piece, and in here you'll see it actually it cuts to the edge, so it took a little bit of sanding and filing as well, but uh, what, overall I'm happy with the results, and so what I'll do now is I'll mimic that on the other side and eventually what I'm going to do, and again not for my game on Monday, I'm going to magnetize the piece in here as well so I can drop in if I'm not playing the bigger one and I'll show you on the other piece here. This um, this is the one for the, the, other, the left wing. You can they have a couple pieces you can put in to customize so this will be the other one of the other big shooters or super shooters that are going to be playing uh, are going to be attached and I'll magnetize I'll magnetize the bottom so the piece will attach there but I'm not going to bother with this for now because gravity will work just as well as a magnet for the time being so okay we're back and I've got pretty much almost done for what I'm going to do before I start priming it I've got the I'll take a look so we've got the guns in place again just rely on gravity just glued the bottom in rely on gravity for the time being just to keep those in place with that back again managed to get some paint on the kit uh, I thought about setting up the my airbrushing area to see if we could you could watch it in process but it was uh, my area does not lend itself well to videotaping so but we see the end results here we've got a base coat of the mechrite red foundation paint and some a little bit of beginning to highlight with the the new uh, a brighter red foundation paint the um, I forget the name of it now but the I'm going to go do a wash of delvin mud and then go back and probably do another highlight, pick out all the metal again and dry brush that to give it that nice uh, beat up orky look. 
So overall, I'm really quite happy with this. Uh, probably got about another hour or two before it's going to be... Won't be quite to what I'm happy completely, but it'll definitely be enough for the game with uh, with Matt on Monday. So, Okay, so got the wash on, did all the dry brushing. I'm going to go back and do a few more layers, but I think for other than finishing off the cockpit, I think I'm pretty much ready for my game. The only thing I found is this the one magnetizing this one wing does seem to come off a little bit easier than the other one does, so I may just wind up putting some glue, just building up a little bit, add a little bit more friction there, just to make sure it's uh, it doesn't keep falling off in the middle of the game, because that would be uh, very annoying. So again, not 100%, but for the game for tomorrow, I think this is uh, more than adequate. So um, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, I'll have a link to the game, and then we'll talk about tactics and and other things uh, as the series continues. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave a comment below letting us know what you think of the new box to battle format. I came up with the idea originally because I found I was going to multiple sources for unboxings and um, painting tutorials and tactics so I figured why don't we have one nice central spot and follow it through and give you a lot of uh, an overview of all those topics. So um, feel free to uh, subscribe that way you'll see when the, the part two of this comes up with the tactics and probably a, a quick battle report as well and that way you won't miss out of any of our battle reports uh, that we do as well. Speaking of battle reports, the one I did with Matt at Mini Wargaming on Monday has been posted on the Mini Wargaming site. Just click on the link in the bottom left there and that'll take you to part one. And as always, if you have any comments, suggestions, recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Any input is appreciated. And once again, thanks for watching.